I wanted to start a new reading vlog because I have a feeling I'm about to start reading a lot of good books that I want to document. It is early February right now and I, I should show you. I always have very ambitious TBRs in the winter time even though it's hard for me to read in winter. I just feel like the days are shorter and I'm not spending as much time outside tanning or at the pool so those are like quality reading times for me but these are all of the fun romances or books that I think are February coded that I would love to read this month. So I thought it would be fun to do a little reading vlog, reading as many romances as I can in a week, in a month, we'll see. Before we get into that though, I'm almost done with Jodi Pico's A Spark of Light. I regret not vlogging more of my reading journey with this because I have been in this book for the last like 36 hours and I'm going to finish it tonight. Like I only have a little bit left. I love Jodi Pico. I've got a whole bookshelf dedicated to her and she right now is killing the TikTok game. It's hilarious. She's a big Swifty. She's making all these trends on TikTok to help promote her new books. It just makes me love her even more. This is one of her newer books. It came out in 2018. It's definitely a heavier plot. I mean, most of her plots are really heavy, but they're all very like ethically coded with um, various morals and perspectives that make you emphasize with every single character, regardless as to if you agree with what that character believes in. But this story definitely emphasizes pro-life versus pro choice abortion clinic. I guess I should play some big trigger warning. It deals with a lot of big stuff. Basically, there is an armed hostage situation at a abortion clinic and you follow the hostage negotiator policeman and then his daughter is one of the women inside as a hostage. What's really interesting though about this novel of hers is it's actually told backwards. I've never read a Jodi Pico book that does this where it starts at kind of like the end. It starts at 5 p.m. Each like chapter or section of the book goes back an hour. So the second part is at 4 p.m. Then it's at three. I'm at one or noon right now. You start the book kind of almost knowing how it ends. And then slowly it just goes backwards and backwards and backwards by each hour. And you learn more and more and more information until you kind of figure out the why at the end without knowing how it ends. Very, very unique style though of writing. I'm not done with it yet, but so far I think I would give it a four out of five rating just because it doesn't have that five star feeling. But honestly, all of her novels are like little five stars to me. I just feel like I'm way too generous with my five stars now. And I can't have every book in my Goodreads be five stars. Otherwise it takes away the specialty of the ones that really deserve and feel like five stars. But this is the fastest book that I have read all winter. And it's really putting me back into fiction. So really, really glad about that. I am going to read Icebreaker next. I just gotta do it and it's winter and it's been on my TBR. Icebreaker is on the other side of my bed. I'm not gonna grab it, but that was on my January TBR. So I do wanna read Icebreaker, but after that, which it probably will not take me that long to read, I've got these six books that would be perfect to read in February and they are what I will hopefully be reading in this reading vlog. So we have Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I've only heard amazing things about this book. Everyone has raved about it and I know the trope. I kind of know what it's about, but I'm very, very excited. I have two other Christina Lauren Lauren books as well so hopefully I like her as a writer but this will be the first one that I start with. I have Allie Hazelwood's Love Hypothesis. I've heard mixed things about this but for February I'm just looking for like easy romance novels to just flip through really quickly. Next book is Taylor Jenkins Reid One True Loves. This plot is... I actually don't want to read the back. I like going into it mostly blind. Taylor Jenkins Reid could write the back of a shampoo bottle and I would be obsessed with it. Like, I love the way that she writes. So I'm so excited to read this novel of hers. And then I have Sarah Adams' Practice Makes Perfect. My mom actually got me this for Christmas. I'm excited to try a Sarah Adams' romance novel and see if I like the way that she writes. Most of these are very, very easy like romance tropes, but I'll talk more about them as I read them in this, not in this video. And then The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. This is about kind of like a group of loners that decide to start their own book club together. So it's not quite as romantic, but I don't think it's a romance book necessarily, but the cover, The Lonely Hearts Book Club, made me think hearts, Valentine's Day, February. So I added it to this month's TBR. And then the last book, I actually do not know if this is a romance either, but the cover felt very perfect for February and it is Colleen Hoover's Regretting You. I understand Colleen Hoover is kind of like a joke at this point, but if I'm gonna judge something, I do feel like I need to read them. And I do appreciate how easy 
easy it is for me mostly to shut off my brain when I'm reading Colleen Hoover. They're just really easy for the most part. I don't know, some of her books I did not like, others I actually quite enjoyed, like Reminders of Ham was pretty decent, but like maybe someday was the worst thing I've ever read. So the scale, it's a very, very wide range. I know it's not like about love, maybe it is. I don't know, I know a little bit based on the back, but again, I'll just talk more about it when I read it. All of these plus Icebreaker are hopefully going to be perhaps featured in this reading vlog. First things first though, I have to finish A Spark of Light tonight. Oh, and thanks for watching. Check out my book playlist down below of all my other book videos. I have a book Instagram called Booking It With Mac. Please go follow that, subscribe if you're new here, and let's get reading. migrated down to the living room but I just finished and I wish I caught my reaction because there was one big like reveal moment that I didn't even know we were in oh, one second I lost my train of thought now there was a big reveal at the end that I didn't even realize we were in for because I didn't know there would be like a twist I didn't know like there it, it, it didn't feel like there was a twist I don't even want to say like what type of twist but there was some big reveal at the end where I was like oh my god and it just breaks your heart a little bit more but honestly really really good book like all of her books I ended up having to go back and reread the first couple of chapters now that I like was invested and knew each of the characters stories but I do wish we got a little bit more of a conclusion on a couple of the story arcs like there were because there's so many like mini plots going on within this plot I feel like she dropped the ball a little bit on this one portion that I would have liked more information on like the after as to what would happen it's just really sad she definitely highlights a lot of truth behind anti-abortion laws that are still somehow in place like in the the South. The story takes place in Mississippi and it just highlights how difficult it is to have like a legal abortion. She covers like every single ethical position. I don't think you have to, even though I side on one side, I wasn't like offended by the other side's perspective or point of view, if that makes sense. I don't know, a very, very heavy topic, very, very heavy armed hostage situation, but I finished this in like three days, which is the quickest I've read a book recently. So four out of five stars, but Ashton just called me because he finished work, so he's gonna head over. I need to shower. I would like to start the next book tonight, but realistically, I probably won't have time. Icebreaker is not next and I'm scared. <laughs> what am I in for?
what I said the last time I filmed about the end of A Spark of Light that I was reading. I think I mentioned how I was going to read Icebreaker next. Um, I decided not to. I ended up quickly reading Everyday Awakening by Katherine Duncan. I just needed kind of like a fiction palette cleanser. Well, also maybe something of substance before reading Icebreaker. I know I've mentioned this. I don't know if I mentioned it in this video yet, but I grew up with the author's daughter. So she gave me a copy of her mom's new book. It's more of like a self-improvement, self-aware spiritual book about five practices for living fully, feeling deeply and coming into your heart and soul. So she goes over like these five big concepts to um, live a better, more awakened life. It is come back to the present moment, connect with something greater, grow your trust, embody love and hold openness. And then she takes you through different like guided meditation prompts, exercises, journal prompts, as well as a couple of like personal stories dabbled in. So I did learn a handful of things that I just didn't realize she went through or that their family went through. It's so hard to rate spiritual self-improvement books like this, but it's probably like a four stars. I don't know. I'm very, very picky with my five star feeling reads, but I think this is very helpful and easy to grasp if you are new to this type of book. I definitely felt very called to read this book. I just felt very like I have to read this right now and it's been on my list since she gave it to me and I felt bad that I haven't read it yet. I always have to check to see what the um, book looks like underneath the sleeve but yeah so I read this that was kind of unexpected. I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning of this video but something different something easier. Well icebreaker is like easy I assume but easy in a different way where it, it's not like a plot each chapter kind of stands on its own and you can read it very quickly and you kind of with books like this I feel like you get out whatever you put into it but I'm glad that I read this and now it feels like whiplash almost to go from this to that but and now we can get our hands dirty with icebreaker I think I'm a little nervous to read it and that's why I was like oh let me read something that I know I would like first icebreaker has been so hyped up that maybe I'm over hyping it we just gotta dive in. I probably won't read it tonight, but I do have to start Icebreaker. Next time you see me, we'll be reading Icebreaker. I finished this book this morning. I really wanted to update you sooner, but I kept forgetting to film or I just felt like I didn't want to be on camera when I was reading this because I was just like in bed. It was either like 2 a.m. in bed or in the morning when I wasn't ready yet, but I did finish Icebreaker and let's just say I will probably never listen to Cruel Summer the same ever again. Like. I don't know what I was expecting. Like I thought I knew what I was expecting with this book, but when I read it, I was just like, oh my God, like we're getting right on into it. I don't even know if I wanna talk much about this book. If you know what type of book this is, which is just like the smuttiest smut you can smut, you might enjoy it. Like if you were in the mood to read that, that's, it's done well, it's done more than once. Um, it, yeah, I'm not gonna say much about this book. I'm glad I read it and I will probably read Wild Things, but I'll never read it again. <laughs> I will say they spend the majority of the book doing you know what, so by three fourths of it, I actually got kind of bored. And luckily the plot picked up a little bit. Like there were two things that happened right near the end where I was like, ooh, this just got interesting. I don't like epilogues, like two years later type of stuff. This book has that and it was like the worst up, like I wish I didn't know that's what ended up happening, you know? I just think it's unnecessary because I'd rather have them like have a future up for like so many possibilities and then knowing what ends like what trope or when, what ends up happening, I'm just like because when you think about it, they're two years later chapter, they're still only like 22 or 23. So they're still very young and they somehow like accomplished what they accomplished but then also ended up i don't know i just don't like that type of stuff but that's not what this book really is about you know yeah i mean it was written well for what it was it was definitely written better than i expected like honestly <laughs> 
I thought it would be as poorly written as like It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, which I know will upset a lot of people that loved that book, but I could not get over how bad the writing was. This book is like, better written smut. This is also the third video that I'm filming this morning where I talk about this book for like reading wrap ups and stuff. So I feel very repetitive at this point, but Hannah Grace leaves no detail undescribed. Like it is a detailed, raunchy little number in here. I'm torn between how to rate this book because out of like this genre of like smutty, romance trash, but with like with a plot, I'd probably give it four stars. Like it was, for its type of book, pretty good. Out of everything I've read that is like this, it's it's good, so four stars. But out of like the general rating for books, this is probably more of a three star read. If you are going into it, knowing exactly what it is and that's what you wanna read, I think you'll really enjoy this. If you're confused and see it as like a hyped up book that everyone likes that you start to read, you're, you're gonna hate it. But I just had to know. As a reader, I, I gotta know what's up. So I'm glad I read it, but oh my God. I also don't think I mentioned it, but before Icebreaker, I did read Breakfast at Tiffany's really quickly. This took me like a day and a half. It's just four novellas, so they're all really short stories, but I think I was nervous or not ready to read romance trash yet. So I wanted to read a classic novella beforehand and Breakfast at Tiffany's is one that I've wanted to read for years. So I'm really glad that I ended up reading it. I gave this one three stars though. And I talk about this in my reading wrap up videos, which I don't know if that's out yet or after this one, but I don't want to repeat myself in two videos too much. The writing was beautiful. I didn't realize how poorly it's aging. I mean, it's incredibly racist, lots of slurs. And even though this was published, I think in like the late 50s, or 60s why is the n-word so commonly used like it just took me out of what could have been a very beautiful story and put me back in like ooh, <sighs> you know so that was kind of a bummer i also ended up reading some of the reviews on good goodreads and reddit and i've come to the conclusion after reading other people's thoughts on this book that this is simply just a old school male gaze manic pixie dream girl story about a free woman who thinks on her own, who has her own thoughts, you know? And he's just infatuated by how different and unique she is because she is rebellious or unique or she's just different. Yeah, it was something. The writing itself was beautiful, but problematic. Also, are we just gonna skip over the whole child bride part? Like, are we just going to ignore that part of the plot? Because I saw the film in high school, but I don't remember the film being like this. And I don't remember the film mentioning that she got married at 14 and it wasn't even a problem back then. Like that part of the plot was just like put in there, but not as like a, ooh, that's a problem. Now reading this today, so many problematic parts of the plot, but a class nonetheless I guess I don't know it like as an English major I feel like we've talked a lot in like various classes in both college and high school and just like as an avid reader about the banned books or like some of the classic novels that don't hold up today such as like To Kill a Mockingbird or Huckleberry Finn or some of these like incredibly racist or just books that like could not be written or shared today and I'm starting to think Breakfast at Tiffany's is slippering slippering sliding down the slippery slope. But there were three other novellas in here and I did really enjoy them. Like I do like his writing and he's definitely like a great writer that captures emotion and feelings, but yikes. I really liked A Christmas Memory. That was my favorite short story in here. And I've underlined a lot of beautiful sentences, but I just could not get past. It was just jarring. It took me out of the plot. I thought it was going to be this romantic New York romance like tale. And then suddenly it's just, a racist story. So I wanted to mention that because I know that I had not filmed an update when I did quickly read this before starting Icebreaker. I kind of just read this and then immediately dove into Icebreaker. So I just didn't give an update, but I did read this as well this month in February. I think it's so funny that at the start of this video, I gave a list of all the books I wanted to read. And I think the only book that was on that list was Icebreaker. This was supposed to be like a read romance books with me video. And I think I read one. I'll probably have to make another one reading romance books, but just wanted to mix it up. I don't know. I can't really like predict or control what ends up happening, even though I try to sometimes, but I just try to follow my gut and what I feel like reading. And that is what this video 
video became. I'm sure I'll read the books that I mentioned I wanted to read at the beginning of this video soon, but definitely subscribe if you aren't yet because I do wanna post more videos like this. And if you enjoyed book content like this, I do have a book Instagram page called Booking It With Mac. Give it a follow. And then on my TikTok, I'd like to make short form versions of stuff like this as well. So I'll leave all of my book related videos down below in a playlist as well. And then of course my Goodreads and every book mentioned is on my Amazon storefront. So I'll leave that down below. But yeah, that was a little reading vlog the last couple of weeks in my life. The battery died, but that was pretty much everything I wanted to say. I'll see you real soon in my next video. Bye. I love a home filled with books.